Yeah, that, that oh, works. I like All right. That. Okay. All right, move, nice. moving on. Hey, what about Tula? Andy Circus claims Venom Let There Be Carnage features Venom's LGBTQIAPXLMNOSY, whatever letters they fucking want. Uh, coming out part of Etepo Kuin of Etepo Kuin's Place to Be Reviews. Right here with all of you. Thank you for joining us again today. Uh, quick video here. We kind of covered this last night on the program, but I wanted to go into depth, give you my thoughts. We're not going to read through the whole article. Uh, we'll just read through certain parts of it here. This is a really, really, really uh, ill-advised decision and timing for Andy Serkis to make these comments. Like Andy Serkis, the fan base likes you a lot, respects you because of your previous mocap work and, and your work in film. And now you want to virtue signal non, to a non-existent point, which makes it even worse. Uh, Circus spoke with Uproxx to promote the upcoming film where he discussed the scene and where Venom goes to a rave. The director explained, I was originally going, it was originally going to be a carnival of the damned and it ended up being Tom had got to know Little Sims, who's a brilliant rapper, I don't think so, and also stars in the movie. Great. And she actually had made a song, unbeknownst to her, called Venom that connected very much with the first movie. And so Tom got in touch with her and that song became sort of the focus. Well, Tom and co-writer Kelly Marcel were always about Venom coming out and going to a party where it was very sort of LGBTQ fucking alphabet C's kind of festival, really, I'd call it. And so this is his coming out party, basically. This is Venom's coming out party, he added. <laughs> what is Venom saying to Eddie here? Eddie. This movie would be better if you put your dick in my mouth. I want to be wined and dined at 69. Like, what? 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 Why, why do we? Why? Why? Like, stop. This character's not fucking gay. Not that there's anything wrong with that. But it's not. It's simply not. Like, you can have fucking gay. Like, we always talk about Iceman, like Iceman's always because like they flipped Iceman, who was a ladies' man, into being gay, and it's like, what the fuck are you trying to do with this? Like, what what is the end game here? Like, every fucking character is gay now. Like, that's that's the fucking idea. Like, it doesn't make any sense. Like, the the gay community, not the weirdos on fucking Twitter who virtue signal, but the actual gay community. Like, I have friends that are looking at this shit and they're like, what the? Why? We don't want this. Like, it makes no sense. This, like, makes people look at us in an unfavorable light, you know? And we're past that. You know, that's the thing is, like, I was always one of those people that are like, everybody's like, oh, you're just a fucking alt-right. I'm like, no, dude. Like, gay people should be able to get married. Lesbians should be able to get married. The way I feel about it is, as long as you're both adults and it's consensual, I don't fucking care what you do. I don't. I could care less. Because if that makes you happy, that lifestyle, then that's what makes you happy. Hollywood is... We're worried about fucking making pre-existing characters gay. Like, they're like, oh my god, Z's, this has got to be gay, Z's. But there's fucking people in Hollywood, like monsters like Harvey Weinstein, like him. Not Harvey Weinstein himself, because that piece of shit's in jail, prison. But there's people like him still preying on fucking children, innocent fucking children in Hollywood. But we're fucking worried about, oh my god, Z's, you've got to make this character gay. Shut the fuck up. Stop. Stop! You know, I was so excited to see this movie. And I, I'm still going to see it. My wife and I have a date night. We're going to see this fucking movie. And it's like, I just showed her this and she's like, what? You know, the end of the movie, uh, Venom and Eddie are like, you know, she is ours. You know, talking about Michelle Williams' character. It's like, so now Venom all of a sudden is gay because Andy Serkis doesn't fucking think that they're going to get enough alphabet fucking representation. They didn't check the right fucking boxes in this movie. Get the fuck out of here. Are you serious? Stop it. You know, this movie gets enough hate as it is for not having Spider-Man and, and daring to exist without Spider-Man. 
You know, and the way Spider-Man is now in the MCU, I'd rather not fucking have Spider-Man in it. And that makes no sense in a Venom, Carnage, Maximum Carnage type story. Not to have Spider-Man. But I love the first Venom movie. It's probably, oh fuck, yeah, the Blu-ray. It's right here. You know, it's right behind me on the fucking shelf. I love this fucking movie. I did. I love the first one. It was fun. You know? But God, just stop with this bullshit. Up rocks writer, Mike Ryan. Then press circus asking, Well, like, actually cutting out these? Because that's very interesting. Of course somebody from Up Rocks would worry about that. Circus responded, Well, coming out, being out, Ryan then countered. Well, you just compared the alphabet C's. That's very interesting. Circus then explained, Well, what is interesting is it's just like, Here he is, he says. In the movie, we... We must stop this cruel treatment of aliens, he said. You know, we all live on this ball of rock, you know. And so he inadvertently becomes kind of a, he's speaking for the other. He's speaking for freedom of the other. What the actual fuck? We must stop this cruel treatment of aliens. Stop trying to conflate a fictional fucking universe and, and compare it to something that's a false narrative propagated by the mainstream media right now. You fucking cunt hacks. Like, what the actual fuck? <laughs> Ryan then stated, And it's very obvious that Eddie and Venom are in love scenes. Like, we all know that. They are. They are in love. Circus confirmed. Absolutely, they do love each other. And that's kind of the center of the movie is that love affair. That central love affair. Okay, and this is the problem with modern fucking films is this right here. So, you used to be able to have buddy cop movies where two guys are like, man, I love you, man. And they, you know, they love each other, but it's like, hey, you know, you're my man, you know, I love you, I'll take care of you. Not my man is in a biblical sense, but my man's like my friend, you know, you're my brother. Uh, you know, and, and that's the thing, man. It's like two guys can take care of each other and love each other and not put their dicks in each other's mouths. Like, what the fuck is so difficult to understand about that in this day and age? You stupid cunts. Like, not every fucking man that has a relationship with another man that is like... They love each other. It doesn't have to be gay. Not that there's anything wrong with that. If that's the way you are, that's fucking fine. But don't try to put it into every fucking movie and piece of entertainment for the sake of box checking when it doesn't make any sense. Like, are you that fucking stupid? Yes, the answer is yes, you fucking are. And it's ridiculous. Like, this this writer or this guy from Up Rocks interviewing Andy Serkis. Like, I bet... Um, in the production notes for I, in the production notes for the film supplied by Tony Sony Tony, in the production notes for the film supplied by Sony Pictures, Circus previously claimed the film is a love story, but not the love story you might think. Says yeah, so Michelle Williams is gone. You know she's with the other doctor now, so it's just left for Venom to pop out of Eddie and like blow him occasionally. Like what the fuck? What the fuck is this? Are, are Venom and Carnage going to fall in love? I mean, are they going to, like, set aside their differences and realize it was just, like, pent-up sexual frustration the whole time? What the, what the fuck are you doing, man? Is, is Spider-Man going to come in and they have a fucking threesome? Like, what, is he going to web shoot all over and be like, that's never happened to me before? Like, what the fuck? The director further elaborated on why Eddie and Venom break up, referring to a scene where the two argue in Eddie's apartment. He said, the argument in the apartment is one of the first things we shot. For two years, these two have been living a frat party kind of life in Eddie's apartment, and he's sick and tired of the place being trashed. It's like living with an oversized toddler with no control whatsoever. And while Circus claims that Eddie and Venom are in some kind of fucking alphabet relationship in this new interview with Upcox, I mean Up Rocks. Oh, what the fuck ever? The film's producer, Avi Arad, notes Eddie is still in love with Ann Wang. Fucking thank you. And... and that's the thing is like Abby Arad really fucked up the first iteration of Venom in live action with uh, Eric Foreman, Topher Grace in Spider-Man 3. So I'm kind of hoping he's not. It sounds like he likes the character, but he's fucking stupid and doesn't know how to like how he wants it to be portrayed on screen, which is Spider-Man 3, obvious. But no, this is this is just going to be a shit show, I think. I'm. I'm going to go in and I'm going to try to be as optimistic as possible because I really want this movie to be good. And I'm, I'm hoping and praying that this is all virtue signaling and it's like that and you'll miss it kind of thing in the movie. I, I don't understand why this is so difficult for Andy Serkis to understand. Ugh. Arad states, on the other hand, Venom is far romantic. He'll do anything to have Anne in their lives. As far as he's concerned, Eddie and Venom are one. Venom is totally infatuated with her and wants her to be part of their family. Ah! Uh -huh. 
<laughs> He's very protective. It's an interesting juxtapos juxtaposition of human and alien. The alien shows better understanding of what his partner needs, which is quite unique. Following up on this production note, Circus would also state Venom holds a mirror up to Eddie, showing him who he really is. Selfish, arrogant, egotistical, and capable of loving anyone but himself. Any Eddie and Venom can't be together, but they also can't cope with being apart. He has to commit to Venom because he has, ha he has no options. As for Eddie and Anne, Circus says, the undercurrent is that Eddie and Anne really do care for each other, but they're not suitable for each other because Eddie is only ever thinking about himself. And that's what Circus wants to happen. Yeah, I mean, this is like obviously just like a gay love scene between Venom and Carnage. I mean, <laughs> Come on, let's take this thing home. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Words from the director speaking to Uproxx in an interview. And it seems as though this is going to come to fruition in some respect. We'll find out this week when it's released. Like I said, I'm going to go in and try to be as optimistic as possible. If not, my wife will probably punch me in the throat in the theater when they dim the lights if I talk too much shit and ruin the movie for her. So we'll see. I am remaining cautiously optimistic. And like I said, I hope this is one of those tiny one-off things that gets conflated or it's just a weird attempt by Andy Serkis to virtue signal, which doesn't make any sense because, like I said, I don't know Andy Serkis's personal politics. I've never really looked into it. Or can I recall any statements he's made like this before? Uh, but this is a very um, Tim Miller, Terminator, Dark Fate kind of thing. Uh, a very, very bad attempt at virtue signaling. And it's going to turn off part of your audience when you already have so many skeptics because you're doing a Venom and Carnage movie without the, you know, the glue that holds these two together, which is Spider-Man. So it's already, you know, it, it has an issue there with a part of the fan base. So now you're going to just piss people off. Why would you even say this? Does it matter? Like, you know, there's a time and place, and this is not the time and place for that. You know, if you're on a, a, a interview that asks you specific, I don't know. It, it's just, it's a weird fucking flex, bro. It's a weird flex. But what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Please opine. Slap that like button for me. Subscribe if today's the day I have earned it. Be sure to ding the bell for notifications. Be sure you're still subscribed if you're already a subscriber. And I say this not just for me, but your other favorite YouTubers as well. We appreciate it. Like I said, one of my most ardent supporters was uh, unsubscribed from my channel recently because I got a notification. He subscribed. I'm like, he's been subscribed for a while. You know, and no, it's YouTube. So just check on check on your other subscriptions, your other favorite YouTubers too. So I'm Etepa Queen of the Place to Be Reviews. I've been here with all of you. And if I don't see you, have a great day, a pleasant tomorrow. I'll catch you on the next one. And remember, it's always better to burn out than fade away.